Welcome to the Click Podcast. I'm Danny Watson, a mindset and manifestation expert and founder of The Click, a company that helps women overcome their fears and limiting beliefs to create a life and business that they love. Within this podcast, I will help you get clear on what you want, identify the blocks that are holding you back, transform your mindset and raise your vibration so that you can co-create magic with the universe. If you are looking to design a life that truly sets your soul on fire and manifests more success and abundance, then you are in the right place. Good morning, ladies, and welcome to a brand new week. Um, I have to apologize for those of you who listen to the podcast regularly. You may have been aware that there was not an episode last week. I have been recovering from a very, very sore throat. Um, It's uh, feeling a lot better now, but I knew that I just needed to rest my voice for a little bit. I have been doing a lot of recording of things behind the scenes recently. We are about to launch a new program um, within the click and we were doing sort of the final edits for that and there was a few things that I wanted to add in and a few things that I wanted to change before that program um, is launched. Um, and so, yes, I'd been re-recording things and, um, yeah, so I felt like I'd just been speaking quite a lot more than normal. (laughs) So I just felt like, um, yeah, I needed to give my voice a little bit of a rest, but anyway, we are here now. Um, just whilst we're on that subject, actually, because some of you might be listening to this and thinking, oh, what is this new program, um, that is being launched? All will be revealed soon. Um, so I will make an announcement here on the podcast when it is launched. Um, I would also recommend you follow me on Instagram if you're not doing that at Danny underscore Watson underscore coaching. It has been a program that has been close to two years in the making. (laughs) So I really feel like this is some of my most profound work, um, And this has been the biggest program we've launched in a very, very long while. Um, For the most part, all of my energy has been dedicated to the Click Academy, which is our coach training program. Um, And a lot of my energy is still focused on that program. But this has been something that I have been wanting to put into the world for a very long time now, based upon the work that I've done on my own journey, the work that I've done with one-on-one clients, And, um, yes, it's about time that I finally release this work. So, um, yes, all will be revealed very, very soon. However, let's get started with today's podcast, um, because this is an exciting topic and I've not really spoke too much about this topic, um, but it's something that I actually am bringing into, um, my new program that will be released very soon. Um, so I thought I would give you a little taste to this. Um, something actually that I do get asked a lot of questions on, and it's not really something I talk often about um, on, on here or on my social media platforms. So I'm going to start with a quote just to give you an idea of, of the theme for this episode. And the quote is, your inner child is the echo of the child you once were. From that child comes the meaning and purpose of your life. Healing your wounded inner child is the most powerful gift you can give yourself. And this is a quote by somebody called John Bradshaw, who is a well-known author and therapist, and he's actually written extensively on inner child work, which is something that I want to touch upon today. Now, inner child work, I want to just preface this episode by saying that I used to think that Inner child work was for people that had had some type of very traumatic childhood experience. Maybe it was childhood abuse, neglect, some sort of very profound trauma. And this wasn't something that I necessarily resonated with. I had a very, um, you know, lovely upbringing. I had parents that loved me. They looked after me. (laughs) They looked after my siblings. You know, I had in a lot of ways a very lovely childhood. 
it was quite a simple childhood. You know, we weren't very a wealthy family. Um, my dad worked. My mum sort of stayed home and looked after us. She kind of had her own business when we were very young and then decided to stop that to kind of really focus on raising us. When I had spoken with people who had been through practices like inner child work, often they kind of had these childhoods which were very traumatic and they had like big things that had happened to them at a year early age. And I just didn't resonate with that. So I never really thought that inner child work would apply to me and to my story. However, <clears throat> it was when I started to really dig deeper into the work around my own self-worth and where I was deriving my worthiness from that I realized that a lot of that was kind of rooted in my childhood and especially my addiction to working hard, my need to prove myself, my constant kind of desire to validate myself through working hard and getting good results and really not feeling good enough unless I was doing work and, you know, creating big things within my life. And I realized a lot of this stemmed from my childhood. Inner child work was actually one of the tools that have really helped me essentially reparent myself. It's been one of those things that has helped me learn how to feel loved, valued, accepted, worthy, regardless of how I show up, regardless of the results I'm creating or the success I'm having. I think for a long time I resisted even contemplating in a child work because I felt like on a surface level I was saying to my parents, my needs were not met. Now, my needs perhaps wasn't met, but this was never in a malicious or, you know, intentful way. It was simply that my parents perhaps didn't know better. They thought perhaps they were, you know, doing the best for me by praising me for working hard, by kind of really pushing me to do my best at school and get good results and really valuing me based upon those grades because they wanted a better life for me. And it almost felt like, I was going against them by contemplating something such as inner child work because I knew that actually I'd had a very loving um, upbringing from my parents. So this is just to then reiterate that inner child work, it's something that I would invite you to consider even if you've had the most beautiful, wonderful childhood because it may be that in spite of the love that you were given, it was given in a certain way. Maybe it was conditional. Maybe that for you to get praise or acceptance from your parents. You had to do a certain thing. Maybe your whole worthiness was built upon certain conditions that you had to fulfill. Remember that the majority of the time, if we are experiencing a certain pattern in our adult life that we are not happy with, so maybe it's, you know, self-sabotage in work, in relationships, maybe it's, you know, proving yourself through working hard and kind of having that stress and burnout as a constant cycle. You know, whatever the pattern is that you're experiencing, chances are it came from your childhood, even if you had the most loving, supportive, nurturing childhood. So I invite you to explore this work and what I'm going to do um, for the purpose of this episode is provide you with a bit of an introduction to inner child work for people that are kind of new to this and then actually give you some really practical guidance for a very simple exercise that you can then go and do to really sort of try and integrate this within your own life. So inner child work then, it's um, normally classed as a form of therapy and it can really be used to help people heal emotional wo wounds and traumas from their childhood. However, as I've just discussed, emotional wounds and traumas, they don't always need to look like these big horrific acts. So it's a process then of reconnecting with that younger version of yourself and processing unresolved emotions and experiences at that time. And then this approach can really then help you gain a deeper understanding of yourself, your relationships, and just allows you to have a greater self-awareness and therefore make really profound changes in your adult life. Now, the work of 
the inner child. It was first introduced by psychoanalyst Carl Jung. So maybe you've heard of Carl Jung. Um, I've actually done a lot of studies around his work. I studied, studied psychology um, and that's when I kind of first learned about Carl Jung. Um, and I love his work as well about archetypes. Um, that's kind of a topic that I also love to weave into my work that I do with my clients. But Carl Jung believed our inner child represents the undeveloped part of our psyche. So he says that the child archetype is a living symbol of all that is undeveloped and vulnerable in our psyches. So what he's really saying here is that our inner child may actually hold the key to understanding our deepest desires, our fears and our needs. So inner child work involves a process of essentially reparenting yourself, reparenting yourself and providing the love, the care that you may have been missing out on in childhood. Even, again, even when it, on the surface level, it may have been incredibly loving and caring and nurturing. But maybe again, you had to do something in order to receive that love. Show up in a certain way, be a certain way to receive that love. Now, the child's brain is like a sponge. It's basically just absorbing all of the messages and experiences that it receives. And whatever you experience, especially in those early years of childhood, between the ages of naught and seven, is very much going to become a part of your subconscious programming. So let's say that you receive a lot of love from your parents, but you feel like it's conditional. It's conditional on you being a good girl, doing as you're told. Maybe it's conditional on you working hard. Maybe it's conditional on, you know, always sharing your toys with your siblings. Now, obviously, parents have to teach us rules about how we interact with the world so that we become, you know, well-adjusted adults. However, what is happening is that from a very, very young age, we're being taught who we should be. Rather than being allowed to be freely who we are, we're very much being programmed by these set of rules, ideas, expectations about who we should be and what's acceptable. And what that's essentially saying to us is you have to be a certain way in order to be accepted, in order to be valued, in order to be loved. So our whole worthiness is not based upon what we feel, you know, who we feel we need to be to be worthy. It's based upon other people's expectations of us, our parents' expectations of us. And I think often this is why so many adults struggle, struggle with the authenticity piece, not really knowing what their purpose is, feeling lost, not really knowing who they really are, feeling like they're having to kind of go through life wearing a mask and being a certain way in order to be accepted. I really believe this is because of this very early childhood programming. So actually, in a child work, it's not just about, you know, overcoming instances in your childhood where your needs weren't met or you experienced something traumatic. It can actually be a way to really identify your authentic self, reconnect with the version of you you were meant to be before society told you who you should be. Now, the process of inner child work, there's lots of different exercises and techniques that can be used here, such as guided visualization, journaling, inner child meditations. Um, one of the most common techniques is to actually visualize yourself as an adult, comforting and nurturing that younger version of you, yourself. So it might be speaking words, offering comfort, offering reassurance, hugging the inner child, providing the care and support, basically, that the child may have actually been lacking in childhood. Now, as I mentioned, I want to create for you or provide you now with a very simple inner child exercise. So you can just have a play around with integrating this into your own life and really kind of just seeing how it sits with you. So for this exercise, then, you probably want to find somewhere where you're not going to be disturbed, find somewhere quiet, and what you're going to do is you're going to just close your eyes. So really, we're going to take ourselves inwards, cut ourselves off from the outside world. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. And just spend a few minutes actually just focusing on your breath 
and just allowing your body to relax. So this part is important, just getting yourself into this very relaxed state. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine a younger version of yourself. So normally around the age of five, six, maybe seven, you know, ideally not much older than seven. So imagine this younger version of yourself. It sometimes helps, I find, that if you have a photo of yourself around this time that you can look at before you do this exercise, that can really help kind of bring back that version of you, that child version of you. Now, with your eyes closed and this version of you in your mind, I want you to visualize this child as clearly as possible. Include as many details as possible here. So what you're wearing, you know, what your hair looks like, where are you? What's the environment that you're in? What kind of facial expressions are on your face? How tall are you? You know, really get clear on the details here. Now, you're then going to approach this inner child and you're going to introduce yourself. So you are the adult version of you and you're going to let that child know that you're there to help them and to support them. So it's just offering that presence. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. And then you're just going to start actually having a conversation with your inner child. Now, now for the purpose of this exercise, I'm not going to give you too much guidance on what you should say, your inner wisdom will know what to ask in this moment. So just go with your gut here, trust yourself, whatever comes up for you in this moment. But the idea is, is that you are having a conversation with your inner child and you're going to ask them for what they need in order to feel safe, in order to feel loved and cared for. And then you're just going to listen. You're just going to listen and see what that inner child starts to tell you. The more you relaxed you are here, the more you can really tune into your subconscious, really kind of touching upon those parts of yourself that you perhaps repressed, hidden away, the needs that have not perhaps been met, you're kind of neglecting, you're bringing that to the surface. So just listen without judgment. Allow the child to just express themselves freely. Now, once you've listened to your inner child express themselves, and you can do this for as long as you feel you want to, once you've done this though, I would like you to visualize yourself giving that inner child the love and care that they need. So this could be words, It might be hugging the child, giving them some sort of comfort, reassurance. It may just be a case of being present with them, just sitting there next to them and just actually holding space for them, allowing their emotions to be felt. Whatever it is, visualize yourself providing that support and care to your inner child. And then you can continue with this visualization for as long as you need. And just make sure you allow yourself to feel any emotions that come up. Maybe that come up for yourself, but equally that come up for that inner child. And when those emotions come up, how do you want to respond? Is it by giving them encouraging words? Is it by physically, you know, giving them a hug, embracing them? And then when you feel ready, you're just going to take a few more deep breaths and slowly open your eyes. So again, this is a very, very simple practice. I wanted to give you the simplest version of inner child work that I could think of. Just for those of you who are new to this work, can give it a little go and see how it feels afterwards. And you can do this as often as you like. It could become a daily practice. But what we're really doing here is we're we're connecting with that child version of you 
you're identifying its needs and you're basically giving it the love and care that they may have been missing out on in their past, even for the people that had a very loving, nurturing, caring um, upbringing. It may be that you're holding space for that inner child and saying, look, I love you regardless of what you do. Even if, you know, you didn't behave well today, I love you regardless. It's that unconditional love. And again, this is really about strengthening your own sense of worth, regardless of what you do. It's saying that I am worthy of love, value, acceptance, even on the days when, you know, I don't feel like I'm great or I don't feel like I've achieved much, or I've not really done any work, or I've not, you know, done anything worth celebrating. It's going to allow you to feel worthy even on those days. So I hope you have enjoyed um, this brief introduction to inner child work and enjoy integrating this exercise. And again, I will keep you posted for all of the details of my up and coming program, which I'm so, so excited to be able to put out into the world. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, ladies, and I will catch you on the next episode. If you are wanting to build your own successful online coaching business, make sure to check out Freedom, Abundance and Impact our free 10-day business and mindset course for coaches and aspiring coaches. To access, simply head to wearetheclick.com and click free course in the menu.